I, I, New I, release Wednesday. <laughs> Dropping now. That's Wednesday show, Patrick is in the house, Strange Manor, and guess who I have back, finally, Hi Brandy is in the house, Liz Gamaz is in the house, the family's in the house, and come on Rob, Rob, come on over here, we got Rob back too, Sup. the gang is all here, this is New Release Wednesday for the September 13th week of and that's the one thing I didn't put in the notes, oh I know what week it is, Aww. September 13th bitches, <laughs> You guys That's have to why you needed us back. I know. Back, How does he keep track of time without us? And I hope y'all are digging the music. That is our new intro music. Shout out to Monday Mistress. You can yeah. cop their self-titled album, Monday Mistress, on iTunes, on CD Baby, or at mondaymistress.com. Shout out to Mike Argyle and Joe Carabello who filled in. I know. Did while you guys were Thank you. Thank you guys. You can also check out their interview on our playlist. Do down below. Check it out after you watch the new episode this yeah. week. So a lot of fun things going on this week to yeah, talk about. Yeah, tons of things. Like, I've been playing the shit out of some Magic Carp Jump, man. <laughs> I think I'm a adult. lot of people are addicted to that game. You ain't the only I'm one. I'm an adult. I'm still playing the well, Pokemon I Go. Play. I haven't been checking out oh, that I yet. I stopped playing Pokemon Go a while ago. I know a lot of people are off. Once I got rid of the tracker, I still want to get a little bit more. No, I'm sorry. So, you know, there, we have they our killed addictions. killed their own game. I know. We all have our addictions. But, uh, yeah, what's going on this week, guys? Um, Well, we're going to talk on Lego Ninjago. Um, a great film. We've been uh, working with, uh, I've been personally uh, working with some stuff with the Nerds of Color. You and I know I've been affiliated with them. So some cool stuff with Warner Brothers and the upcoming Lego Ninjago movie. So we're going to talk all about Lego. Fancy. We're going to talk about Dragon Con. Yeah. We've been waiting for this recap, y'all. So we want to know all about it, all the fun things that went down. I remember half for of the it. Uninitiated. <laughs> and we're also going to talk about the things we fear. Why? Because the biggest movie right now that everybody's talking about is It. So the fear of clowns, the fear of snakes, those okay. are some of my fears. So I want to talk a little bit about things we fear and a little bit about it. I think that's just yeah. giving people things to hold over our heads in the future for blackmail purposes. I know, I but I'm yeah, I'll make this work. So before we go into like, everything else in our picks, please. let's throw it to the Lego Ninjago trailer, and then we'll head into the Lego into the whole Lego topic. Here we go. Baby, now we got Mom, um, could we talk about Dad? What's my name? Dermadon! Dermadon! So, when you guys got together, was Dad always an evil warlord? Okay, well, here it is. I got swept up. He had so many plans, he was so ambitious. He said he wanted to conquer the world. It must have been. I thought it was a figure of speech. If I had never met Garmadon, I would have never had you. Hey. His dad ruins everything. Uh oh, it's Garmadon! Can I have a bathroom pass? Costa's gear. Students, a true ninja knows when to fight and when to blend in the shadows. Unbelievable. Watch this! Ow! Where'd that come from? Hello, Dad. La Lloyd? That's yeah, right, and it's Lloyd, Dad. Cause baby, now we got bad blood. You know we used to be bad blood. It's okay, Lloyd. Nobody's parents are perfect. Yeah, but I feel like there's more to Garmadon that I need to know. To understand your future, you must go back to your ninja roots. Your dad was a ninja too. Lloyd, you hear that? We've awakened the unstoppable beast. 
Biafra. Are you ready to risk your life for Ninjago? Ninja Go! It's good in a long time. Lloyd, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I think I think it was my arm. Is, is it bad? Is it Whoa. bad? I don't want to look. A scale of one to ten, how bad is it? Oh, I'd say it's about a seven point arm ripped off. This film is not yet rated. All right, guys, we're gonna talk a little bit about Lego. One of my favorite toys coming up. Was it yours? Oh yeah, we had that, um, I'm a military brat, so we lived overseas in Germany and England, that was the thing. Like everyone, they had Legoland, for crying out loud. Oh, I've never so, been to Legoland. Oh, it's the greatest experience of your life, especially as a little kid <laughs> and as an adult. See, I remember Legos growing up a little bit, but mostly at my grandmother's house. Like my grandma had this really awesome chest of toys yeah. for things that my brother and I could play with when we went over there. Yeah. Legos was definitely one of them, and of course now... As a teacher, because if it didn't frighten you enough already, yeah, I teach small children. <laughs> um, we have Legos, and they're two, so it's the, the larger blocks of Legos. But, I mean, you know, I'm still, yeah, that's a part of yeah. my daily life. <laughs> all day, every day, Legos. All, all the time. And the worst thing in the world is actually stepping on a Lego. I going to say, I don't think there is a pain <laughs> on this earth, earth that, that just matches that. I'm saying Oh so, gosh. yeah, that, that's the worst. Uh, I want to say also, at first, originally for me with Legos, it was kind of the worst toy. I didn't like it because, and yet, it required a little bit of effort. It has no I appreciate it as an adult, and now, and then I grew to love it because once you learn that you can, so like compared to like my G.I. Joes, it was already all together. I didn't, boom, I just played with my Joes. With the Legos, you actually had to assemble the vehicle. You actually yeah. had to be some effort. But See, that was what I grew to love part. is the customized, exactly. Yeah. Was then you, it could become customizable. You can turn it into whatever you want it to be. It, so it I, I treasured it even more. Like yeah. it, it, it pulled at their brains and made them think outside the box. And exactly. I mean, I think that's one of the best things that you can have for kids. From anyways, it's just yeah. drawing that creativity out of them. So Legos are awesome. Yes. And even now as an adult, like all these sets that they have coming out, I'm. <laughs> I've been saving money. Saving. Now it's a little expensive, but I've been saving a lot of money to get that Millennium Falcon. I was getting ready to that Star Wars because we just talked about Force <laughs> Friday on the last episode. Yeah. One of the most expensive items, but also one of the hardest items to get. And probably one of the most difficult Lego sets, from what I understand, as well as that Millennium yeah, Falcon set. Yeah. So but, by the time I finally save the money, it'll be sold out for life. But I'm saving now for it. So positive like, thoughts. Think positive thoughts. <laughs> so we're all master builders. And for those yeah. who don't aren't familiar with the phrase master builder, I think the Lego movie, now Lego going from the toys into the film market, which we're going to go even further with Lego Ninjago. Mm -hmm. But the Lego movie was kind of like their first really big in theater. They had like a lot of direct to video lego films yeah. which, which were really cool i've done a lot of those uh, with my little one you know because real cool family stuff but lego movie let's oh. talk a little bit Everything about that awesome. yeah i mean i think that's the, <laughs> the biggest thing people took away with it it was catchy yes it it really had a lot of pop culture references yes. in it that everybody could appreciate i mean i'm from like freaking tardis to batman i mean it was it was just so much fun i think and it had a great message yeah yeah so like the whole time it's like this little boy just wanting to spend time with his father and that's really what this world was created on is how many children play games because they want their parent to join them so yes. i love that part of it too yeah and then so going from there with a, a great message that lego movie built upon to lego batman i know you didn't get a chance to see I haven't yet. Seen that yet. No. strike against her card i wanted to point that out because she did so we're gonna make sure she sees it she you did see lego batman uh, we went let's go on years. lego batman a little bit okay it's, yeah let's, let's <laughs> we can't lego go a little bit so what, what can we um, say a little one bit? of my favorite parts and i saw somebody who was dressed at dragon con as uh batman with the lobster in like oh, the, yeah. the smoking jacket like i mean it's again again it's just fun yeah. it's just really fun wholesome, um, really hysterical. Again, even for adults, you have laugh out loud moments, you know, on more than one occasion in this movie. And it provides a great message, even if it's something that, you know, We'll try not to in. spoil it. Yeah. But we, we, I was we gonna, all know I about was watch her. I the was Batman. Be like, don't, don't do it. <laughs> we all know about Batman and not him, the parents, because yeah. that's all part of his thing. So that's, that's really kind of like the emphasis without spoiling for you. Okay. The segment, like, like we know the, with Lego Movie. Batman's with, parents die. With. <laughs> Rich. <laughs> The whole thing with the parents, 
uh, and you yeah. know working together with her child mm-hmm. kind of continued on with the Lego Batman film yeah. is the importance of family mm-hmm. and so that was a real big thing without pushing it too much but you gotta see oh, it okay. uh, yeah. Brandy totally and Liz okay. confusing them they're back and I'm confusing them because we look just alike seriously it's like twins here except she gets to be Arnold Schwarzenegger and I'm like the little I... short squatty Danny DeVito one so <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> Lego Batman was awesome. Lego Movie is awesome. And now, moving on, have you at least seen the trailer? Well, we just showed it. Yeah. So, Lego yeah. Ninjago, again, the I emphasis on family. the series. Do you? I've seen a little bit of the series. Oh, look at you. Where's well, my just... card? <laughs> okay. She got it back. She got it back real quick. <laughs> so, you enjoyed the Lego Ninjago trailer. Are you looking forward to Lego Ninjago on September 22nd? I really am, because I have been watching the series for a very long time, and I've loved yeah. the progression of the story. I love the, the the relationship between all of the characters, and i seeing that there's a movie and a cat, so apparently a cat's yeah. a bit lit. I was so. loving that aspect. <laughs> I, that's what least, Did they have the cat in the series? No, I don't. Because that blew that, me away. That, that was comes, awesome. I may, be, I may be a season behind, so I'll okay. leave yard now. But unless that's popped up, it has not yet from mm-hmm. the episodes I have seen. When I, I actually thought about you when I did see it. Because you're the, the resident cat person on the show. <laughs> oh. I thought that was super cool. Did you see the cat? Uh, no, I, I have not. Okay, you got it. It's great. It's on the trailer, and it's yeah. like the villain is a cat running around, like, knocking over the leg. <laughs> it's, like, it's so funny. It's going to be awesome. and But again, so. the emphasis on family because the bad guy that the Ninjago team faces mm. is family. Yes. yes. So a weird relationship there. So I'm, I, I, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, I think it's going to be really amazing. I mean, just like every other one of the series, I think this is just going to continue to build. Uh, yes. And, and Lego's doing some great, awesome stuff. Great stuff. Because it is for all ages. Yeah. Yes. making their movies for all ages, I yes. think. Or I'm just a child forever. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm okay with that too. Okay. Yeah. So Lego's doing some awesome stuff and we're lucky to be in their camp with Warner Brothers producing the new Lego Ninjago movie. Um, this is past week again with the Nerds of Color. We released an exclusive image on the on the Nerds of Color Twitter that then Lego Ninjago retweeted it out of Garmadon. Am I saying the name right? The, of villain, the character? Right? Yeah, we I put that so. out there. Awesome, amazing <laughs> picture. I'll show it to you guys if you didn't get a chance to see it. And so I talked with my guys there because, you know, we got a lot of big things we're trying to do with New Release Wednesday, with Nerds of Color, and now with our relationship with Warner Brothers Picture, we're going to have a contest. Our first official contest here on New Release Wednesday. And with the knock, we are going to run a Lego Ninjago inspired build. We want you to pull out all your Legos and we want to just see a weapon. Uh, a house, whatever. What would you want to create? Are we allowed to participate? Pull out them Legos, y'all. Oh, and you can win. Actually, you know, I have the stuff off camera. I should have grabbed it. Hold on, real quick. Y'all, y'all talk amongst so, yourselves, real quick. Real quick. About that Patrick fella. <laughs> I know he's kind of like talks all the time. Oh, yeah, I'm just not sure. Throws his arms in front of the faces. <sighs> they oh, always I'm give sorry. me a hard time. As you, so, if you don't give us a hard time. We're gonna run a contest. Yes. Show us your your most impressive Lego inspired creation. Ninjago creation with hashtag throw it up on Twitter. We want to use you to use the hashtag hashtag Lego Ninjago Build 2017. Again, that's hashtag Lego Ninjago Build 2017. No one else is using it but us now in this contest. You heard that here. Throw that up there. Official. So that way we can see it and we can judge. You yeah. have from now until the 21st, the day before the film premieres on the 22nd. Yeah, because on the 22nd, we're gonna announce the winners. So yeah. you have until the 21st to do your build, tweet it out so we could see it. Mm-hmm. And we're going to have a flurry of things. You could win this Lego Ninjago shirt. Oh, Van oh. Oh. This Lego Ninjago <laughs> water the bottle. Oh. The official movie poster, 27 by 40. You're going to want to frame this up and throw it down. This keychain. Us press twin. I have like these water creatures that are involved in the show. What? There's these like shark things. I don't know where I put it. A lot of cool stuff. You're going to win. <laughs> We're going to give seven Wait. winners away. Oh, wow. Because nice. there's seven members of the Ninjago team. We're going to give okay. seven Lego Ninjago prize packs. So that means, guys, Yay. that there's plenty of room for all of you. So show us what you got. Show us your most creative build. Yes. Think outside the box. Think like a child. Think, you know. Be like Liz. Fun. <laughs> And make sure you use hashtag Lego Ninjago Build 2017. We want to see it. We want to give you a prize. We can't wait yeah. to see it, y'all. And check out Lego Ninjago on September 22nd, 2017. We'll be there. Yes. Join yes. us. Yay! Lego, y'all! Hey, guys. So I'm here with my top picks for the week. I know you've missed my voice. You've been gone for a while. 
but I'm coming to you with a handful of ones that I think are pretty good. You guys know how excited I've been about uh, Dark Metal. So the first one came out, I enjoyed it. It definitely threw me just a little bit. I wasn't expecting, I mean, I guess I should have known better, but there were some parts that were confusing that I had to kind of go back and you know figure out what had been happening prior to that. But so far, so good. And guys, right now, Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo are doing a great job along with John Romita. So basically, in this next one, uh, Dark Metal 2, you've got Soups and Wonder Woman, and they are currently hunting for a missing ally. You've got Batman, who's trying to investigate what the hell's been going on. There's a centuries-old mystery that he's trying to solve. Again, this is supposed to be like the culmination of Snyder's career, so I'm still really looking forward to it, and it's, it's really got me so far. So, Dark Metal number two, to first pick. My second pick is a continuation as well. I came to you guys last and we were talking about Sheena of the Jungle, which was the, the reboot of a really old character. So I got the preview, I got Zero, which for 25 cents, they didn't give you a whole lot, but they did give you a little slice of what she was gonna be like. And to be honest, I'm not so sure how I felt about it. It was a lot of like crazy posing in the jungle that seemed totally unnecessary and like, booty and cleavage, but really I know it's just trying to get you to to draw you in and maybe it's trying to draw in more of the male reader, I don't know. But right now we've got Sheena number one coming out, it's being written by Marguerite Bennett who has been working on a lot of the Archie stuff, so I'm really hoping that we get a bit more storyline with this. It's also got art by Maura Tott and J. Scott Campbell. So in issue number one, we're getting Caldwell Industries who have sent out these really vicious mercenaries to this town. Um, because the village has been accused of killing guys. So it's kind of this tit for tat, guys have gone missing and murdered, so we're sending out mercenaries to take care of this. So basically Sheena has 24 hours to find this one guy who's missing and she's got to find him alive. But the problem is, is that she is not the only person who's looking for him. So already we have a little bit of a better storyline than what we were getting in just that brief introduction in Zero. So I'm going to give it another shot. I'm hoping that we get a little bit more out of this. I do like her style of writing for the most part. So fingers crossed on this one. I want to be able to come back and report to you guys and tell you that this was also just as good as a lot of the other stuff she's put out. And my third pick. So guys, this week is the 25th anniversary for a lot of things. It is the 25th anniversary for Mark Hamill voicing the Joker. It is also the 25th anniversary of Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn did not start out in the comic book, guys. She started out in the animated series, and she has been voiced by a handful of different actresses at this point, but you all know that signature Harley voice. You see her on the page, you see her on the screen, and it's the same voice in your head every time. So she has honestly just become this icon in 25 years. She is really loved, and right now you've got Harley Quinn 25 anniversary special with Amanda Connor, Jimmy Palmiotti, Chip Zdarsky, Paul Dini, who else? Um, Chad Harden and Joe Canones. And basically, guys, this is just a baller collection of stories written by a bunch of really amazing writers. Um, Amanda and Jimmy have been working on Harley for the last eon now and have just been blowing her out of the water, like doing amazing things with her. If you're unfamiliar with Chip Zdarsky's work, he's hysterical. His humor is funny. He was writing, um, he was doing Sex Criminals, um, and he's been doing uh, Howard the Duck. So you've got a lot of good background here. And of course, Paul Dini is the original Harley uh, creator. Like he's one of the guys who helped bring this character to life. This character who should have originally been just a random sidekick on the show, but got so much of a cult following that they gave her this amazing personality and she has just grown and she really has become a figure for women to really get behind. It's not just that she's, you know, the Joker's girlfriend. She's got her own personality. She's got her own agenda. She's not standing up. And, you know, and just, you know, to be punched back down again. No, she's standing up for herself now. She's not taking shit from anybody. And I have just fallen in love with her more and more as the years have gone by. So Harley Quinn, 25th anniversary special is my third and top pick for the week. Guys, I hope you like what I brought. All right, so you may have noticed, just maybe, that we've been missing the last few weeks. We know you've missed us, please. <sighs> yes, of please. course. So... In case you missed it, because we're bringing that back. Uh, in case you missed it, Dragon Con. Mm -hmm. 
DragonCon. DragonCon. <laughs> yes. So DragonCon, Brandy and I were able to attend, yes. which is literally my favorite convention. I would Same. drop all other conventions just to go to DragonCon. And if you haven't been to DragonCon, it is pretty much one of the biggest multimedia, sci-fi, pop culture, comic book, nerdum, geek fest, fandom, drink a thons oh. ever. Yeah, and I, I remember Ever. most of it. I really do this year. I kind of behaved. Oh, I'm so I did. Bad. I know. Yeah. Last year it was a blur. But see, the thing <laughs> I, is, apparently I went. There's just so much going on. Literally, Liz and I saw each other in registration. Yes. Which was really sweet. So day one, we we're made like, a connection. Yay, we're all awesome. And then we made plans to get together the we whole did. weekend. And then it didn't happen because there was so much going on. But then I saw her at the Star Wars yes, meetup. So there was, was all the glowy sticks. And I had a glowy stick. Like, oh my god. And, uh, and then I didn't even know she was there. And then I was like, look, there's a Hufflepuff Jedi. And it just happened to be brain. <laughs> uh, she's wrong. It was a Hufflepuff Sith. Come oh, to the dark no. side. Oh, well, I'm already said that, but you know that. She's... I know. Judging. Okay. <laughs> So, anyways, let's give you a really quick uh, wrap up of what we experienced at Dragon Con. Our favorite moments, our least favorite moment, because I know there was a lot of stuff that happened at Dragon Con mm. this year that was not so cool. No, it was not. Unfortunately. Um, and then let's talk about your favorite celebrity sighting. Wow. So, number one, let's talk about what I guess what I noticed was different. This yeah. was a very. Not a very cosplay heavy convention like uh, previous Dragon Cons mm -hmm. have been. Like, you'll go out in the Marriott probably around midnight and you'll see like 20 robots. And I didn't see a lot of cosplays that I yeah. tend to see. And I think part of that honestly may have been the fact that the convention has just grown so much. I mean, truly exponentially since I've been going. I started going in 2012, 2013. At that time, there were only 60,000 people going. Uh, yeah, only 60,000. No. <laughs> As compared to this year where there was 82,000 freaking people. There was. But so, didn't it feel late? I don't know. I never had. Had any, I always so all of the the hotels are connected as as well as with the mall right. which has the food court and like the CVS and mm -hmm. all the dragon gun people are like we know these spots yeah so it's all connected through like glassways every yeah. year I'm always sitting in the the hallway kind of like I just gotta I'm just gonna go to we Marriott. call them hamster tunnels yeah. because that's literally how you feel you're just squeezing through this tunnel I did not have that experience once this year I have to agree with you and I think part of that honestly may also I'm just the explainer here today yeah, right? I also feel like that may have been because the temperatures are different so guys. The uh, Labor Day weekend in Atlanta, they call it Hot Atlanta for a reason. I'm talking 90-something degree weather. And yet this year, whether it was because of Hurricane Harvey that had blown through and it changed everything out, I don't know. But it was in the low 80s the entire time. People didn't mind being outside. They didn't mind yeah. walking in the streets because they were weather. dying of freaking strokes. And this is the year I decided I wasn't going to cosplay because I had just been in Vegas and I was mm. so tired. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to drink myself stupid and have fun with my friends and that was all I'm going to do. <laughs> so I'm mad at myself because I would have worn my N7 armor and all of my heavy duty, like I have a lot of armor cosplays and I tend to bring them to Dragon Con and always regret it. Because, because it's, it's like, like a million degrees, and this year I could have totally done it. I know. We, <laughs> Next um, year will be too hot. I mean, every year I say I'm only going to make like two or three costumes, and I think this year I didn't do too bad. I brought eight. Oh. And Jeez. I wore all of them. Only eight? Only eight. It wasn't that bad. Hey, I have friends who have had like... It's only four days of a show. Sometimes right? you have to eight changes a day. So, God Just bless. Just get on our level. Uh, her name is Phoebe Nix, and she's an amazing human being. She does all kinds of stuff, including emceeing for Pinups by the Pool, which was at the Sheridan this year. Um... Homegirl brought something like 14, 16 costumes. I don't know. It might have been mm. more than that. Like... People go nuts at Dragon Con, and that's one of my favorite things about Dragon Con is that there's always something going on. There's always something to see, whether it's people in costumes, uh, you know, 10 a.m. on a Thursday morning when everybody is arriving, or the crazy ass costumes that are going on for Dragon Con after dark. If you want to go see kilt blowing, you can go see kilt blowing, and yes, that is exactly what it sounds like. Dudes in kilts, there's a leaf blower, and you're getting the lovely show. I have friends who do participate in that. Um, it's awesome. Who, I mean, it's Did just. Did you see the Spartans going around? Uh, there's always the Spartans. The 300 going are going around. And I also have friends who are. They're walking by, and I'm like, okay, that's my that's a mistake. Mistake, future ex, future uh, baby daddy. Always mistakes. Uh, I met one of the female Spartans that was there uh, awesome. through friends of mine. She is a badass chick. I know. Seriously. Really? Uh, 
I think Spartan Wonder Woman. No, 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 no. no. An actual group. Spartan. Brittany, Brittany Joy's Joy also Joy awesome. Awesome. Brittany Joy. <laughs> Adorable costume. Yeah. So, what was your favorite part of the con this year? Um. Oh my gosh. This is Dragon Con. It's really hard to pick like that one moment. But I, I guess when I went around the um, the Walk of Fame. So there's a there's a kind of like a cove where they put all mm -hmm. of the stars um, and they all sit at their booth and you kind of wait in line. But yeah. um, I waited in line with my my friend. So she wanted to meet Michael Rooker. I had met him years mm -hmm. ago randomly at Dragon Con <laughs> because he liked my M8 rifle from Mass Effect. And he kind of comes up and he's like, I want to hold your rifle. So that was like a few years ago. So I meet him again, and my friend's like, I can't do it. I can't. I'm, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. So now we're gonna we're gonna wait in line. Get up he there. was so nice to her. She was like so happy, and I just walked. I was like, because <laughs> I already had an autograph and everything from him, so I wasn't gonna spend the money. But he goes and gives people hugs, and he's just saying hi. And I, I just I love him. As, I, all of the actors are like that. And then you have Barman, who's like running around on this lady's scooter, yeah. like with his butt in her face, and he's like running around like, hey everyone. And John like, Berman, who, by the way, is recently getting over, um, what was it, appendicitis, something I think? Something like that, yeah. Uh, he'd been posting stuff online, so awesome kudos to him for even making it out. I mean, taking care of your health is, like, utmost priority, yeah. but, but he really cares about the fans, so that's pretty awesome. Um, I was getting onto an elevator, and it opened, and it, Dragon Con, you know, the elevators are always just going to be jam-packed. Like, literally, like, oh, this one's going down, I need to go up. Fuck it, I'm getting on anyways. Like, you <laughs> ride elevator the elevator. Con. Um it opened and there was like four people in the elevator and we were all oh, sweet and we go to hop on and I stand in and I look straight up and it's Kevin fucking Sorbo <laughs> who by the way is way taller than you'd think he was gonna be uh who seemed a little put off I'm not gonna lie that he had to be riding the Hilton elevator with us plebes uh -huh. um but also apparently I found out afterwards that he's kind of douchey oh and that's uh nice. is like Super like anti anti gay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I so, saw that this morning. Yeah, he's not so a very I'm nice person. Like full. But uh, it was still a really cool moment. That's probably one of the closest like rando encounters I've had to a celebrity. Um, my favorite thing about convention is always that it's one of the times of the year that I get to see all of my friends. I mean, and not just oh, yeah. like you know close friends like you, but like people that I don't see other times of year like this is my nerd family reunion con it is i can just see like, everybody i've had friends from israel from england from like i've met friends from denmark and sweden yeah. and you I sit mean, there and you're like this is the only convention they'll yeah. go to because it's it's a huge it's a huge cosplay and a lot mm -hmm. of international cosplayers like to go there because the masquerade mm -hmm. and the different competitions so yeah. it's, it's, it is a family reunion it is and it's amazing which Bringing that around to the things that I like the least about this, un unfortunately, um, you know, you get that many people into a crowded setting and that much alcohol in people's systems and really shitty things happen. And in years past, people have blamed it on, oh, well, it was another group that came in. But honestly, I think at this point, I truly believe that we as a community have to police ourselves better. Uh, there was a costumer who was very severely injured when a handful of drunk people decided to throw chairs off of the 10th floor balcony of the Marriott outside onto the streets below and it hit her in the head and sent her to the hospital. They, they said on the news, um, this, I mean this hit the, all the local channels yeah. and they said pretty much if she hadn't been wearing the, her helmet, her <laughs> cosplaying helmet, and she was cosplaying Loki and she yeah. had the Loki helmet on, she would be dead. Yeah. And I mean, this is this is a serious situation of, I, I, I don't want us to always consistently go, this isn't part of our community, it couldn't have been a cosplayer. I'm like, no, we have to do better. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, everyone knows the rules of the hotels. Yeah. It's like after certain days, you can't get in this hotel without a badge. Right. So I think the excuse that we like to do a lot, I think as a community is, it's somebody outside and I think you're right policing ourselves of, it's a drunk con, I get that, but I just, I'm just very flabbergasted by how, and it's getting more, every year there's always an incident now. Yeah, and unfortunately when you get too many of those, what's going to wind up happening is that the few people who are acting like assholes are going to ruin it for the rest of us. Yeah. And Dragon Con has also changed so immensely in the last few years just because of the sheer amount of people there. That I mean, I have friends who have decided that's just not the same convention that they yeah. grew to enjoy. And I mean, even for me, the awe of the first con is still 
I haven't recaptured that again. And it's not necessarily because of the people that I enjoy there. It's because of the other people coming in. Yeah. So, you know, I think in I think terms of this convention yeah. and, and all conventions, um, as they grow and change and morph around, like you, you really have to be aware of what's going on and you have to be that guy that stands up and says, hey, don't, don't do that. What are you thinking? Um, yeah, because this happens with any convention that has been growing. I mean, if you've gone to the original KatsuCon, which I have, I've been going to KatsuCon since almost the inception when I think they used to be done in D.C. Like, I was very little. But, um, I think, what are they, 18, 19? They're, like, they're, they're, they're been around a while now, and it's not the same convention it used to be. Um, but we as a community needs to, like you said, please ourselves and do better because the more convention, the bigger conventions get, the more popular they get, they're starting to magnet like people who who probably shouldn't be at the conventions because they're not there to enjoy the cosplay they're not there to enjoy the friends mm -hmm. they're not even there to enjoy alcohol they're there to be destructive right so if you want these things to continue happening guys you know stand up for what you know is right stand up for you know the little guys stand up for those people around you so that you can continue to enjoy all the things that you have been i mean and despite all of this I mean, I think we can both agree. We will go back to Dragon Con from yes. now until eternity, you know, as long as we're still having fun. And this yes. year I had a great time. I, I did absolutely too. Love I already it. have my hotel for next year and Ooh, I already have, safe. like, I'm already, like, set up. So, uh, guys, Dragon Con. Dragon Con. Hi, right, guys. This is Patrick, and these are my picks for what's the date? Oh my September God, September 13th. September 13th, 2017, NRW. Impossible. I'm bad with dates, y'all. It's been so much going on. So much going on. So let's talk about the picks so you can pick it up and then do what you have going on. Um, my first pick, thank you to Brandy for doing all the heavy lifting on this one. Harley Woo! Quinn, 25th anniversary special. Shout out to Amanda Connor and Jimmy Palmiotti. We love those two. Um, a lot of great creators that you know on the series and a lot of creators you probably haven't seen do Harley are going to be involved with the 25th anniversary special, so check that out. Oh, and also real quick, you've seen the events tab on the NRW page. The gang here at NRW and myself and a whole bunch of other people were doing a cosplay contest for Batman Day slash Harley Quinn Day for this year um, at Amazing Comic Shop and Paint Division. So check out the events tab for all those great events. I'm going to be bringing my little one dressed up as Harley. As the DC superhero girls, hero girls Harley, because that's the approved childhood Harley, I would say. <laughs> so, because <laughs> I, I, man, I don't like Suicide Squad Harley, Harleys. Come on now, don't do that. Anyway, second pick uh, is from Image Comics, Realm Number One. It's essentially The Walking Dead meets Fables. It's being done by Seth Peck and Jeremy Hahn. You know, with The Walking Dead being so so amazing and Fables being so amazing, throw those two together post-apocalyptic time with mystical creatures and people trying to survive with all that, I'm there. I'm going to check that out. Realm number one, Image Comics. Top pick for me, Marvel Comics, Runaways number one. Runaways is back, y'all. Runaways is actually for those that have been following me in my career in my studio, Temple Far East Entertainment, Temple Studios, where I used to manage a ton of talent that we did work for all the different companies. David Newbold was the inker with Adrian Alfana, the artist and writer Brian K. Vaughn on the original Runaways. It's an amazing series. If you haven't seen it, pick it up. Well, they're relaunching the series and pretty soon, I think it's on Hulu. Netflix, Hulu. Hulu will be launching the Runaways TV show based off of that original series. So you're going to want to check it out. Runaways is such an amazing title. It's about some little kids whose parents are actually supervillains of various genre types. So cool, so amazing. You're going to want to check it out. And this new Runaway series is a great book to check it out. That's my top pick. Real quick, before I sign off, there was a couple other picks that was hard for me to break it down at the top three. But I just want to give a real quick shout out. My man Tom King is bringing Mr. Miracle number two out this week. Check that out. Generations Captain Marvel, where we have um, Captain Mar Marvel meeting Captain Marvel. Issue number one, which leads up to the whole new thing that Marvel's doing. And Ninjak number zero from Valiant Entertainment. Those are my picks, y'all. Check it out. Okay, everyone, so if you've been following me at all through, through my career, you know I love scary stuff. I love scary books, scary video games, scary movies. <laughs> it's scary. I, I just love the feeling of being scared. And we all know what movie we're talking about, right? It. So have you guys read it and um, watched it? Yeah. I've okay. seen bits and pieces it, from what I recall of the original. No. Okay. I see. Um, I love every Tim Curry movie ever. This is one that I have not been able to bring myself really? to see. Yes. Yeah. See, I was very I little when it, um, when I saw it. And I, I 
I have a recollection that I, my cousins may have put me in a bad situation and I was very small and I watched this movie. Yeah. And I have been horrified of clowns ever I since. I think it makes everybody scared of clowns. Yeah. Like, I was fine with Ronald McDonald, you know, and mm. oh, no, some other clowns. <laughs> really? I've always hated him. I've, so, I've, same with my I've daughter. Always. I never understood why she was so scared. It's not a good mascot. Him. He's a little creepy. But, yes. yeah. No. I was fine with Ronald and then came it, and then I was like, uh, I don't know about... <laughs> Yeah, clowns make it makes you afraid of clowns, and it does. And, Tim and then Curry, when John William Gacy yes. dresses up the kill, serial killer, mm. like no, right? Well, and, cool. and Tim Curry was the original, yeah. and if everyone remembers the era of of um, of Tim Curry, like he is a Broadway oh, yes. singer, he's his acting just. It encompassed like, everything. A like, horror picture show, people. Yeah. Yes. Come so on. when he he played this psycho clown monster like creature thing, yeah. it, it it to me is the most horrifying thing I've ever seen as a kid, and I still have not gone back to see the original because I remember being so scared. I have it. Let's do like a viewing. Oh, Let's do it. You want to dare to do it? Oh, like a live stream. We should do yeah. something like oh, that. Oh God. So my coworkers nice are stuff. being really funny. So we're gonna go see this movie, the the remake. So they they remade go the Kings with one of the Skarsgård boys, which I think that's what's that's my that's my weird thing right now because the Skarsgård children are all really good looking and now they're taking one that is really good looking and turning into a psycho. Yeah. I don't my my loins are really confused. My loins are so confused well, right it's now. Funny because I have to ask you before, totally off base okay. because you brought up the Skarsgård boys. Yes. I saw this on the internet, so, uh -huh. you know, everybody's doing it. Okay. Skarsgård, Skarsgård boys versus the Hemsworth boys. Hemsworth! Oh, oh, damn. <laughs> so that's, that's a no-brainer for you. Oh, okay, oh, okay. So Chris Hemsworth, and then, like, Alexander Skarsgård, and then, like... Well, before you say it, I gotta go with the Hemsworth boys. Come see, on. See, but, they, like... They can get it before the Skarsgård. I don't really care about Liam. Like, there, there's an order here, people. Maybe uh, I should... No, and Liam did have a thing sorry. for Miley. Oh, I think they still like. But, they but still, still, I gotta give. Oh them. no, Hemsworth! Come on, breaking headboards. Chris, no, Chris, yes. No, mm. so Chris can get it. I'm no, sorry. stop. That was much. That's too much. <laughs> stop. <laughs> I get too far. Go ahead. <laughs> oh my gosh. Scars guard. Okay, it's it depends on which one you're talking because I can't just throw them all in because you have I can't remember the guy's name. But it's the second Skarsgård brother. He played Floki on Vikings, and I don't really find him attractive at all. Floki's I, awesome, though. He's awesome, but I don't find him super attractive. No, you're, you're right, though. But he's but awesome. Like, yes. <laughs> uh, but then, like, this younger Skarsgård who plays Pennywise now, I mean, I feel like I'd be robbing the cradle if I even looked at it. But, <laughs> so I mean, he's, he's an attractive kid. I have, I had my my time in my life where I thought Tumblr was a good idea and, <laughs> and, and I deleted all of that and I've been sober for four years. Good job. But, for um, thank you. But uh, Tumblr, people love to kind of create these fan fiction erotica oh, man. of oh, now oh. people because Somebody, uh, if for you some reason this clown is it. like hot and I'm like, it's a fucking clown. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I have a friend who no. like, that's her shtick. Psychopathic. No. Murderous clowns is her fetish. Oh, I can't. So I can't. Like straight up ICP I guess. I guess. Um, what am I? No, she's and not ICP. <laughs> oh. That's a whole nother that's a whole nother genre. genre. Shit. Oh, like that's. Cr I don't know. I that's crazy. As shit. one of my friends have said is like, your kink is not my kink, mm -hmm. but your kink is okay. So, but it's not if it's a clown. You're evil and you're wrong. But. <laughs> So the remake. So we got Stephen King's remake, yes. and it's got um. And I, forgive me, I don't know the names, but it has one of the actors from Stranger, Stranger Things. Things. Yes. Mm. So a little name. boy, yeah, yes. a little yeah. boy who plays the main character who's in love with Elle. And forgive me, I don't remember his name. We'll we'll mention if somebody, and you all probably know. I'm terrible at that, but um, I've been reading reviews, and yes. we talked about it earlier. It kind of has a Stranger Things. The remake is going to have a Stranger Things kind of feel of yeah. those boys like versus trying to fight this evil like clown creature yeah. thing. And is he an alien? From what I understand, too, he was a creature. Like it, at the very end of the first film, like he's like yeah. comes out of the shell of the the, the clown. Is like, oh, so it's an alien that took the embodiment of a clown. Right. Mm -hmm. I am learning so Gosh. much right now. I had no idea. Yeah. I just clown. Nope. Clown I saw him once as a child, and I remember yeah. very. I remember the going I remember into the bath and, and the, him crawling through the bath. I remember these things in horror. And this whole thing, he lives in a sewer and yeah, hashtag gets, it floats. Yeah, yeah, I know that much. <laughs> and the red, the red balloon, <laughs> like poop. It floats too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what things are we most afraid of then? 
Snakes and snakes. I've got to say, snakes takes the number one seat over clowns for me. Really? Yeah, snakes are fierce snakes. Oh, I love snakes. Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark, fucks no. me up. It fucks me up with clowns. Raiders of the Lost Ark, fuck me up with snakes. Yeah. Uh, for me, fuck it's, the snake. It's, they can all um, die, die, die in hellfire. No, no I, I, for me, it's I, I'm Indiana Jones in all ways. Is it's uh, like snakes, rats. And then there's spiders. And people say, what about clowns? I'm like, well, I'm liber liberal as hell, but I'm also a God-fearing woman who loves her Second Amendment. So I'm not worried about clowns. I can take care of that. Uh, but I can't shoot a spider. <laughs> see, and I love snakes. I love so what's your I don't mind. I love snakes. I like, I like rats. I've had friends who've owned them. They're the sweetest I've had hamsters. So, uh, I killed like hamsters. Like hamsters. Um, yeah. Spiders, hamsters. I'm not, like, so off over. Because, again, like... When kids get freaked out over something, who's the person who has to get it out of the classroom and back uh, outside? Um, sure. So I'm, I'm gonna, gonna go call you next time there's a spider. <laughs> oh my um, gosh! I, I, I sat on my island for like oh. an hour waiting for the spider to move. I was like, I need to call somebody. <laughs> oh my gosh! So, really? Wow. Something. All right, y'all are probably gonna think I'm crazy, but I have past, I have past experience with this. So just just run with it. I'm afraid of um, of malicious spirits. Oh, that can mess like you up. Like guys? Like, ghosts? yes, yes. So, mm -hmm. you, okay, y'all, some so of y'all... So you want to go on a ghost walk? No. Some of y'all are going to think, like, I, I got you, I'm here with you, and others of you are going to be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Would you not go to a haunted house? Um, No, because I have had negative experiences with mm. ghosts in my life. Wow. And maybe one of these days I will sit down and talk with you about it. It won't be right now. I don't want to relive that at the moment. Um, Girl, but, you know, if you want to go real deep, you can just say I'm afraid of failure. <laughs> That's why my parents don't love me. No. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna change the topic real quick. Okay. So, number one clown of all time. Then we have Pennywise. Oh, it's got. We have Ronald McDonald. We have the Joker. No, mm -hmm. he's not really. Krusty, are, you have Krusty, Krusty the, clown. the Clown. Wait, are we Let's saying scariest the or are we saying our favorite? Because scariest is it. Period for me. Well, so it, I would say it. Yeah, scary. it has to be Pennywise yeah. has to be the number psycho. one. So, or so those guys who show up at Dragon Con every year, like from that video game Twisted Metal, oh, yeah. and they oh, have like the nice. bellies all on, like <laughs> oh god, yeah, those awesome. dudes, those dudes creep me on. It's not so much this so, the favorite than clown, it's this because it is the scariest clown of all time. Pennywise, Pennywise, is I think pretty he, goddamn he's crusty then a favorite because Krusty didn't. Krusty's Joker. I don't, how the hell am I gonna yes. like the Joker? Joker's you have to. You're trying to kill the Joker. Why would I like the Joker? The Joker has uh, to die. Speaking of which, happy 25th uh, Joker anniversary to Mark Hamill. Oh, yeah. He started voicing the Joker 25 years ago. Oh, this week. oh look at that! Shout yeah. out to Mark Hamill. I know. So, I know. so, so the Joker is not a favorite. That's mine. It's kind of like. Okay. <laughs> well, so yours is you crusty. Can, okay, okay you so <laughs> we're just gonna have a heated argument. What is we, yours? No show next week. Oh, They're just gosh. gonna go battle it out in the backyard. I can um, take you, you know it. <laughs> I don't you like don't clowns at all, really, so I'm just going to say none. It's I don't good. have a favorite. Because, you don't have a favorite no, clown? No, no, no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and we're out of here on this one. All right, I guess. Okay, everyone, I know I've been gone for a while, but I'm going to give you my top three picks. I have been really behind on comics, so as I've been sitting around, I'm trying to pull in what I really want to... I guess catch up on and one of the one of my picks is Amazing Spider-Man number 32 so um, Dan Slott has done a wonderful job on kind of incorporating the Secret Empire story within his uh, miniseries and you have Peter and Otto <sighs> you know they're fighting it's just really interesting to kind of see how the selfishness of Peter kind of shows through his actions and it kind of was a little jolting for me but um Watching us, this the story is progressing. It's a lot of emotions, and I know being that it's a, a, a mini series, I'm kind of expecting at the very end there. I mean, you have Aunt May looking in the distance from them fighting. It's just, it's very different than some of the um, Spider Mans I have read in the past. So I I think Dan's done a wonderful job, and Secret Empire has really jolted the world, obviously. So him being able to pull in all of those aspects. And then make this arc work with um, Spider-Man and, and Otto, and now we've got now we've got the Goblin, and I I, I think people are going to enjoy the, where um, Dan is taking it. So my second pick is Wonder Woman number thirty. So if you've been following up with this arc, Shea Fontana has I, I just love this story because you have 
the finale of the heart of the Amazon and the the cabal has obviously <laughs> learned that trying to manipulate Wonder Woman is a bad idea. So you have, I know you have the finale, you have the DNA. So everyone's going after like Dana's DNA and it just brings up this aspect of a woman and her right to her body. And, and I think she has done a wonderful job with, with, the writing of kind of explaining like Diana has an ability, her body can do something, but she has the right to say no. And it's, it's, a, it's the story really just talks about how we manipulate what we need out of a woman and what her body, is it really hers? And does she have the power of, of saying no? And, and every, every aspect of this is, I don't know. I just, I, I, I kind of got shook the last time I read it. I was like, this is this is great because we don't really see a lot of comics talk about this particular issue about a woman's right to her body. And, and this story really like pushes that. And I, I really enjoyed that. Um, number three. So getting on a less serious note. Adventure time and regular show. Two of the biggest enjoyments of my life. They have a crossover like series. And I'm a child. And of course I'm going to read it. So I love Adventure Time, I love regular show. So the number two is coming out. And basically, what does she do best? Princess Bubblegum screws up again and creates this altered dimension and pulls in the regular show and has to send off her trusty slaves, Finn and Jake, to go try to find the power, which is being hidden away by Skip. And everyone knows Skip because he skips around from regular show. Um... If you're looking for some great laughs, I, I, I think you're really going to just want to pull this um, this comic. Um, the art's awesome. The characters are great. Just seeing kind of like Mordecai and Rigby and, you're, and they're like trying to hide away from Finn and Jake. And I kind of really want to push the writers to make a movie now of this because I know with regular show kind of ending and breaking my heart. That's fine. Just break my heart. That's okay. But I, I would love to see this this comic like be turned into like a mini movie or mini series or something because it's hilarious. So those are my top three picks. I hope you enjoy my picks and um, you let me know what your picks are. Okay. Bye. Okay, that's our show. And on yeah. W for September thirteenth. I'm gonna beat him. <laughs> beat him with it. And it feels so good. Ooh, mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, we had to bring a We're back. back. So happy you guys are back. <laughs> so many fun things. But we are still going to try and bring on some other cool guests. I've been yeah. working on quite a few Almost things. Definitely. We have Baltimore Comic Con. Actually, before Baltimore Comic Con, this weekend is Small Press Expo SPX. If you've never mm -hmm. been, that's okay. a cool independent uh, con for all those independent creators out there. I know you okay. have a few artist friends. Yep. I used to do SPX. Great show. A lot cool. of characters we love that started working at Image started at SPX. Awesome. Going to want to check out that show. And then later on in the month is Baltimore. Where we'll be there. And fun, talking fun, about fun. upcoming guests, I'm going to go ahead and announce it now because we haven't done it yet. Let's do it. I will be interviewing Daryl McDaniel's DMC of the legendary hip-hop group that started it all, Run DMC. He'll be on NRW yeah. when we film at Baltimore amazing. Comic Con. Fucking yes. awesome. I can't yeah, it's really awesome. I'm going to be oh, wearing yeah. my Adidas. No, I'm going to be Adidas No, it's all tricky way through. puns to crack. That's <laughs> fucking I'm awesome. just going to pop up behind him and start Look forward it. to that and plus a lot of other great interviews yeah. that we'll have lined up. So, uh, also one more bit of homework, uh, coming out this past week to just, you know, be timely and let y'all know, Captain Underpants came out on DVD and Ooh, The awesome. Mummy that we had a little bit of a talk on the show. I still have to see it before we still have I can to see it. We can't really judge, judge it. I'm not going to judge it until I see it. But it's out now, we're going to watch it. Yeah. If it's free. Now we don't have to pay as much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And uh, also, before we sign off, uh, last bit of homework, Lego Ninjago Build 2017 that we just discussed earlier. Mm -hmm. Our first official contest. Please enter. Mm -hmm. We're going to give away seven prize packs of Lego Ninjago to you great guys. We can't wait to see your stuff. And before we go, sign off, I, I hate to end it off a, a sorrowful note, but yeah, we're going to celebrate his life. And I know a lot of us have met him and have been affected by him. Uh, so. Comics writer, comics author, who he's written, he was a big guy at Marvel, created so much at Marvel, then went to DC. Mm -hmm. But you know him from creating Wolverine, yeah, from Swamp Giant Thing. Size X Men that gave us the X Men that we know and love, as well as Swamp Thing with mm -hmm. DC, uh, with uh, Brian Wrightson. Len, so, uh, Len, Len, Wine, Len Wine was born in June 1948 in the Bronx, and he spent his time growing up in New York. And when you flip through Wikipedia, it tells you that him and Marv Wolfman would you go and do the weekly tours at the DC Comics Studio. 
as they were growing up, and that really inspired in Lynn the desire to draw. He ended up writing, but the, the scuttlebutt behind the scenes was that artists would go into DC or Marvel and be like, do you have any Len Wein scripts? Because he writes scripts for artists. Um, this is a guy who struggled with surgeries his entire life in and out of the hospital since either he was three or seven. He was single digits. So that's why you've got a character with a friggin' healing factor. That's why Swamp Thing's health is, is related in the way that it was. And, and Alan Moore dug him as a person, dug him as a creator. Alan Moore takes up Swamp Thing in the 80s, creates Constantine, creates all the characters that he's done. And then when it comes time to the editor of Watchmen, he reaches back and says, I want Len Wein to do that. And when you flip through any of the absolute books and you see the scripts and everything related for that, Watchmen Len Wein affected a lot of could people. not have yep. been anywhere near competent without without Len Wein, without yeah. his tribute. He was involved in the video game that came out, the tie-in for it, the before Watchmen stories that, that came out in the late 2000s. Uh, he was, you know, on there. It, it, DC does good with royalties. Marvel did not. Mm -hmm. uh, Marvel still doesn't, but Marvel to this day was at least making sure that Len was at the red carpets. Uh, most recently, at the very least, Logan, he's getting the press package. Yeah. And from what I understand from an interview his wife gave on mm -hmm. Monday, Logan was the last movie that he saw in theaters. Yeah. And he also appeared in the one of the X-Men films. I Days of Future which, Past, yes. he was one of the senators. Along with Claremont, scene, some of the other great X-Men creators. When it, Brian Bendis tweeted this out today. Um, Wolverine is just as impactful a character to our culture as Harry Potter. And we know that the world's going to stop when we lose J.K. Rowling. Mm. God forbid, that's an <laughs> awful thing. But yeah. the fact that it hasn't for the creator of Wolverine is an absolute damn shame. He was a gentleman. If ever you met him, you meet the guys that want $40 for a picture, that want $25 for you to just bask in their presence and smell their cologne. I could drop names. I won't. Yeah. Len Wein was never that dude. One of the most personable guys you'll ever meet. Mm -hmm. And again, Wolverine is probably what he gets is most synonymous for. as well as Swamp Thing. Yeah. But giant size X-Men... For me, Colossus, as a person of color, Nightcrawler, affected me with Nightcrawler, Storm, Storm Colossus. He, he created DC's first international Washington character. Yeah. Wow. He created Wolver uh, Wolverine, Marvel's first, I think, Canadian lead character. Mm -hmm. And apparently, per Wikipedia, DC's first African-American character, which was then shot down by editorial. This is 1970, 1971 time frame. Yeah. Uh, I don't know more about it. I thought it was it. Tony Isabella with Black Lightning. What, what year was that? But that was Isabella. But, I don't know. I'm not sure. But yeah. we'll check out the Wikipedia. We'll you know find that out. We're Cele always learning. Celebrate. But he was just he had he was so instrumental in paving the way and inspiring yeah. for so many creators yeah. and such a nice guy to meet. So I, you know I, when we we lost I, another one, but his yeah. is felt throughout the entire oh, yeah. community. Oh yeah. I the last I saw him was San Diego Comic Con 2016, mm -hmm. and I would take a book from the Commandant's reading list because why well, walk around with 25 books when I can just have one and just ask a whole bunch of pros to just sign this and then I go in and I trade it with my fellow marines and they're like who the hell are all these people and I'm like my fucking heroes and I can talk about each of them he draws Batman right then and there for me but the outline of the bat head he put in a helmet and wrote out best bat wishes and he's like this is a helmet because you're in the military and I was like oh my god <laughs> I mean, this thing just went from cover price to $500 because Len Wein just drew some yeah. just a sweet yeah, kind dude. That again was grounded. That what like this is the guy who co-created a license to yes. print money, <laughs> and he wasn't charging for autograph, charging for his time. I just, it's rare, man. You don't, you don't see folks like that, and, and God bless him. God love him. God keep him. Just miss him already. So yeah. I hate we hate to be glum and grim because we've discussed quite it's a few guests this past year. Celebrate it's the our man. community. So celebrate the man. We, to, in order to celebrate, we suggest to you guys go read some of his, his work, yeah, yeah. pick up some of his work, enjoy what he left us because it's so amazing. But you know, we want to just dedicate this episode to the amazing Lin Wayne. Yeah. yeah. All right. So week of September thirteenth. Bye, guys. You think he remembered? Yeah.